you, Professor Lin. Our second speaker, Mr. Nuri Vitachi, known to readers of children's books as Mr. Jam, is one of Asia's most successful authors. Uh, he teaches at Hong Kong Polytechnic University and has written more than 30 books published around the world in multiple languages. His best-known book series, The Feng Shui Detectives, The Times of London describes as endearingly wacky, while CNN describes Mr. Vitachi himself as the beat reporter of the offbeat with his columns being published daily and weekly in a variety of newspapers and magazines. Uh, he is also the co-founder of the Hong Kong International Literary Festival and the Man Asian Literary Prize. Uh, Mr. Vitachi today will be talking about the distinctions and literary requirements for junior literature and adult fiction. So please put your hands together for Mr. Mary Vitachi. Hi, good afternoon. Hey, could you get the, um, the techie to find my file on this uh, computer? Somebody? Hi, everybody. Talk to me, it's lonely up here. <laughs> um, oh, it's nice to be here, though. I mean, it's, I feel very honored. In this room are the finest brain cells in the academic world, Asia Pacific. But that's enough about me. <laughs> that's, that's it, great, thank you. Good, uh, actually, um, the uh, talk about creativity, uh, forgive me those of you who were at my last speech, I mentioned this in my last speech, but uh, uh, those of you, hands up if you're new to Hong Kong, if it, or if you don't live in Hong Kong. Okay, well quite a few of you. Well, you know, Hong Kong, I'm sorry to tell you, is the world's least creative city. I mean, I love Hong Kong, but I have to admit that, because all around you, like Hong Kongers are great at throwing up buildings, because that takes physical work, but thinking up names for them, that takes creativity. So we can throw up buildings, but we can't think of names for them, so we give them labels, uh, places to, when the British arrived in Hong Kong, the main city was called Queenstown, the central part of Hong Kong now is called Central. <laughs> when the British arrived, the water was called Victoria Harbour. Today it's called The Harbour. In the middle of Central, there's a building called Central Building. Five years ago, they put up a tower next to it, Central Tower. Around the corner from Central Tower is a uh, office block called Commercial Building. And Hong Kong is the only place I know which has a skyscraper called Skyscraper. <laughs> Two words, it's in, uh, it's in Tin Hao. Uh, I live next to a hospital which has two buildings, Main Block, called Main Block, and New Clinical Wing, New Clinical Wing. <laughs> Just occasionally, we decide, let us be creative. Let us use an adjective. So we go to our dictionaries and we find an adjective, which is why you find a building in Discovery Bay called Greenish Court. <laughs> There's a building on Nathan Road called Newish Building, <laughs> which has never been accurate. It wasn't accurate when it was new and it's not accurate now. There's a building not far from Newish Building called Adjoining Building. <laughs> the one next to it is due to be demolished. So, what are they going to do now? In that worldwide house, I found a, a store called Surplus Shop, and it was empty. Um, I used to have an office on Electric Road, and every day we went for lunch at a restaurant called Quite Good Chinese Restaurant. <laughs> the, uh, the signature dish of this restaurant, top of the menu was quite good noodles. And, you know, they were pretty mediocre, so that was accurate. Uh, my favourite uh, Hong Kong restaurant, sadly, has been closed down. It used to be on Stanley Street, and it was a vegetarian restaurant. And can anybody guess what it was called? Correct. You walk into vegetarian restaurants, and every waitress had a name tag just here. And every name tag said, waitress. <laughs> and served to differentiate the girls from the fish and the plants and the furniture. 
So, welcome to Hong Kong. <laughs> this is, a, as I say, this is an uncreated place, but we are, we are trying uh, very hard. And one of the things we're doing, of course, is fostering the English language. Uh, so, with the help of departments uh, like, like our hosts here. Um, on the walkway between Causeway Bay and Wan Chai, there used to be a sign which said, um, dogs should not shit on this walkway. <laughs> so I, I couldn't resist adding to it in a felt pen. Sorry, we cannot read signs that dogs. <laughs> but of course, um, linguistic dis discourse problems, as we know better than anybody, uh, are usually clues to what's going on uh, in your head. Um, there used to be a tape loop at Quarry Bay Station, and it said, Ladies and gentlemen, beware of your personal belongings. Now think about it, what does that mean? Does that mean that your laptop will bite you in that station? <laughs> there used to be a big poster in Van Ling Station which said, Beware of station announcements. <laughs> of course, in most Asian languages, there are no plurals, so of course there's a, a particular uh, issue here in that, um, like in all over Tokyo, you find signs in department stores, um, beware of the store pickpocket, as if each store has its own pickpocket. <laughs> you know, Tokyo is so weird that that wouldn't surprise me if that was true. Um, I was looking for the most worrying sign in Asia, and I found it on the door of the men's toilet at the MTR headquarters. Beware of the man behind the door. <laughs> <laughs> at least I thought that was the most worrying sign in Asia, until I noticed the same sign was on the door of the ladies' toilet. <laughs> does not get used very much. <laughs> My favourite sign, though, in Asia, sadly, has been taken down now. It was in the general post office, uh, next to the old Star Ferry, for those of you who, who remember it. There's a huge sign that said, Beware of your head. <laughs> Which is actually rather good advice, don't you think? Definitely the most dangerous thing we have. Anyway, that's by way of introduction. <laughs> I'm actually going to talk about uh, children's literature. Um, first, a little bit of self-introduction. I write detective stories. Uh, mostly they're about um, an Asian and a Westerner trying to work together, which is, uh, of course, why I have an interest uh, in this conference. And then I've branched out from those to, um, to children's books, which again have an Asian East-West uh, theme. Um, I do them under various names. Can you see the likeness of me there? Um, and uh, they range from teenage books to books for small, more children. Um, why have I been so, so successful? I've found it very easy.